So on this side we have so the guitar heads on that side, those are the current two currents. Currents, they're the highest ones, they're 2100 gallons per hour. And they're, they're a lot cheaper, they work, you know what I mean? It works. Okay, so that's why the controller looks. This is the current different. control? Uh huh. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why I keep it. You know what I mean? I try to keep it as cheap as possible, but also I uh, spec the equipment. Uh huh. And you try to push it to like. This is the uh, loop system. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yep. Marine Depot loop system. That works. Yep. It works pretty well. And then your Cone S. Yeah. Now, so Aquamax, right? Yeah, Aquamax. Aquamax is, I don't know how long they've been in business. But a lot of the stuff we use is Aquamax based. So this is a C6, C5. This is ready for a five to 600 gallon tank. Be quiet. The uh, yes. loudness is the the other tank over there. Yeah. But I like uh, I like Aqu Aquamax. I like this collection cup handle right here. Are you running your UV or is this there? Nah, man. It was here when I started. Oh, okay. I turned that off. That I turned that off long time ago. You know what I mean? And then these lines are from like the doser. Oh, sweet. I mean, the only issues that I have, I guess, with those is like with the KH and the calcium, like I go once in a while. So. Uh -huh. Yeah, you gotta you gotta pinch them. Yeah, I gotta come back. Even with calc washer, you gotta yeah, you gotta do that. I mean, so now. I don't know if you noticed this little pipe right here. Is that ozone? So this one is the one that's for the calcium reactor. Oh, okay. So the way the way the way we're gonna do it is it's gonna be open like that. Okay. It's gonna be open like that. But it's 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 like a steady stream. Let's say. Gonna have to be like this. There we go. So uh -huh. And then you're you're fine-tuning your pH. You know what I mean? Whenever, whenever, I guess whenever the the pH controller comes in, I can show you how it works. So yeah. And then you can add it to the video. Yeah. Or uh, I'll just do this one, and then I'll do a two-part uh, video. Yeah. And then we'll just explain how it works and stuff. Like that. That's awesome. And then we have the the e flux the current uh, return pump. It's Oop. ready for a three thirty oh, okay. one hundred gallons per hour. Okay. So current meets the return. You know what I mean? So one thing one thing to think about, like, you know what I mean? Whenever you do use sumps, like if you're pushing more water than what the skimmer can hold, like it's, it doesn't make sense, you know. Because the whole reason is for having a sump is like filtration. Yeah. I mean if the if, if the skimmer pump is only for a rated for twenty one hundred gallons, you have a six thousand gallon power pump and it's like just pushing water through you. Know? Yeah. Okay. So you Yeah, I recently added to the feeder. I don't know if you noticed that last time I didn't have it. It's pretty cool. Um, is that was that what like one of those fifty dollars ones or? Yeah, there those are from the Mars. The oh. Mars uh, aquaponic lights. Mars grow lights. Yeah, grow lights. Max, you know what I mean? Like it's. It makes sense to put a light like that. You know what I mean? The Cheeto reactors, that's what people use, right? They use the UV. Yeah, I took my Cheeto reactor down. Oh, yeah? It wasn't working that. Uh, it, it's the, I guess I wasn't pushing enough flow through it. Mm -hmm. But that's all right. I want to do a top down. Yeah, And there was a customer like, hey dude, there's water on the floor. And I walked back here and I, after that to turn off the, the water and the pump. Put the top on. <laughs> you know, we're from the air. <laughs> Those are like bad, bad days here at the store. Like we never have issues like that. Oh, that's sweet.
some lighting. Timer. Oh, awesome thing. Right now, I think we have like the, the clovers, the blue clovers. Uh -huh. Taking over slab. Not a lot of the rust, most of the rust right now. And after, we want to make these new. You see, like the growth, like even since the time that you were here last time to now, these are, like, the strawberry shortcakes are like insanely like red. You know what I mean? Like the their polyp extension is like ridiculous right now. Yeah, those, those little polyp, polyp looking things, like this. they're not McDonald's, man. Yeah, I didn't even know what they were talking about. I was like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, because they, they don't have the same uh, physical characteristics. So. What can I say guys, I'm a sucker for these top down shots, love it, kid in a candy shop and man these colors are just amazing. Uh, I want you to stick around, keep watching this video, let me know in the comments if you saw me or not. Use the code word CORAL. Oh. Yeah. Have oh, you been working on Daniel's tank? Yeah. Uh, I'll show you right now the rock that I'm on. Some of the, like, the coolest looking things. That so, Daniel's tank, we also got an Optimax customer. <laughs> Daniel's going to have to let me record his tank one day. Yeah, man, whenever it's like up and running, like it's finally established and everything. Daniel's the owner of uh, the Coral Reef. How would nature do it? You know what I mean? How would like all that stuff like I mean me being a biologist it kinda of, like always puts me like okay like so what does a fish add? What does the, the seaweed, what does the algae do? What does the rock do with nature? You know the what's the, what's the function of the coral, function of the flow. So you start thinking like that and you start to mimic that in your brains. You know what I mean? Because you need to like adapt the same type of environments because once you do that like stuff like this happens and it just starts exploding because you the corals like are used to like certain conditions and once you bring them into like the aquariums you need to try to mimic the same conditions you know what I mean that's when you have the, the, the largest growth the best colors you know what I mean because the cool thing about having them in our systems I mean everything is controlled yeah. You know what I mean? In the wild, like, you know, the temperatures are going swinging up and down, nutrition, maybe some of the clothes don't get them. So here, once we have everything, they're controlled, we can control the lighting, we can control, like, nutrition, we can control, like, the way the colors look. If we don't want colors, we just want growth, we can do that, you know what I mean? So it's pretty awesome. But also, we, we still need to keep in mind, like, they're, they're coming from an environment that's, like, 
massive, you know what I mean? So like it's something to mimic it in such a small little little space that like you need to like have like an understanding of how the ocean works, you know what I mean? The flow, how, like, how strong the currents are. You know what I mean? You know how like people have like issues sometimes with like cyano, like algae, yeah. stuff like that? It's because of the flow in the ocean, like it's just like the currents just like pull everything out. I mean, and I, whenever, whenever I started the hobby, I always understood that like the race were like the desert of the ocean, which means there's like the nutrition is like hard to come by, which means that that's why you don't have much algae growth and much like, that's why you have corals that are able to go because like the nutrition is like really low. I mean, compared to other parts, whenever I used to work offshore, like you could see like the algae just like everywhere, matting everywhere. You know what I mean? Like corals can't live there. Really? Like, the, yeah, because like the, because like, like the nutrition, the nutrients have the level, the phosphate, nitrates are like high. You know, so like the corals like won't do so good. So. Freaking awesome. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you, and you would see it because of, like the water was green. In, like in the middle, like a little farther in the inland, in, into the ocean. I mean, like the farthest I, the farthest I ever went was like maybe 200 miles in. Yeah. I mean, like the water is like super blue, but then it's like also you know like it's, like, it's like freaking awesome. But yeah, so I always try to like understand that. You know what I mean? Like it's I'm trying to literally mimic the ocean. With the lights, you're trying to mimic the sun. You know, you're trying to mimic the current and the flow with your flow pumps. You know. This, you're trying to mimic the waves that are crashing into the beaches. You know, I mean, like, it's how many miles of, like, beach do you have in the world, you know? It's like hundreds of miles. So, this little, little container, it's like a little, like, little speck of it, you know? But, that's why refugiums are always, like, best thing ever. I mean, because that's like an added, like, natural way of, like, purifying your water. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm going mangroves too, and then I have Chino, and I have purple. They seem, they've actually seem to help a lot right now. They seem to stabilize a lot of the stuff that I'm doing right now. This is awesome. <laughs> Like I was telling everybody last time, like consistency is like the number one thing that you need to like keep with like SPS dominant tanks. Even even like with a mixed reef, you know, a lot of these Aikens and a lot of those uh, softies, like the new, like the really rare ones. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people buy them because of the color, mm -hmm. and then once they put them in the tank, ah, that looks like shit, and then they're mad at like the suppliers, and like, ah, I'm never buying them from them again, and stuff like that. But Reason is because suppliers have a different condition, and then you take them from that condition to your conditions, and you might not have the same conditions, and your condition's a little bit below, the subpar. So the coral has to readapt into those conditions. And sometimes the conditions won't allow it to, to have the same colors that it used to have in the suppliers. You know what I mean? So that's why a lot of the stuff that, that's why whenever you go and buy from a supplier, you always gotta make sure like you're Water, water quality, like what do they have their KH, calcium, their par values in their corals. Mm -hmm. Because that matters, you know what I mean? Because if you change an acro from a 400 par to 250, like it's going to change color, it's going to change morph, it's going to change everything in its body to like be able to like, survive in that type of environment. So it's going to change its colors. Changes body structure. Sometimes I've seen acros change their body body structures. You know, instead of growing up, they go to the sides. You know what I mean? Because they have such large quantities of like light, so all they do is just like expand to the like sides. Tabled out. Yeah, tabled out. Expand to the sides because that's with like the larger amounts of light. Is. You know what I mean? And sometimes whenever they have lower light, what they do like those the ones that go to the top because they're trying to reach. The, they're like plants, you know? I don't know if you've ever noticed some plants or trees. I mean, like, there's some trees that expand or... Yeah. 
the branches. Just, like flat, you know what I mean? And some of them just grow up. I mean, it's just like they're just trying to survive. It's literally what it is. Jeez, this is sweet right here. That's why I love corals. The colors just look different. From the front to the side, top down. This is badass. I mean, whenever, whenever my tank is looks something like this at home, I'll take, I'll show you, I'll show everybody. I mean, everything at home like we started as little friends. Check this out, Alan. Come here. Look at the screen, now. It's fucking badass, bro. Damn, dude. Yeah, that's it's what like I'm saying. Blue, man. You're a freaking coral, man. Holy crap. I yeah. Had, I've never seen that. That's what I'm saying, you know. It's like morphing, you know. You yeah. know what I mean? I, and, I, and I think I know what I did, you know what I mean? I, like, like I was telling you earlier, I increased the KH. And I increased the... Uh, increased the KH and I increased the acro power. You know what I mean? I doubled the acro power into... Dude. Like an SPS master. Damn, Look at that. Yeah. I'm even surprised I'm like shit. Dude. Yeah, I mean It was supposed to be blue. No, red. It was supposed to be red. That's what, it. what is this one called? Um so whenever we buy them from our like number one supplier, uh -huh. they don't name them okay. because it's like a copyright. Oh uh, gotcha. So these guys just send those macros frags. But they could be ultras, ultra This rare is like an ultra ultra this is some fire right here, man. They mean like ultra rare, whatever. Like, Jesus. You know what I mean, like, it's, those guys don't care. Because I'm sure they have some awesome stuff somewhere else stored away. Look at that polyp extension. It's insane. It's fucking beautiful. Look at that. Damn. <laughs> Damn, did that blue? That, it, it wasn't blue. It's killer. It wasn't blue. Yellow, it's like yellow, blue, red. Man, that's freaking. Damn, dude. That's dope. <laughs> I'm gonna take a clip of this and put it on my Instagram. Oh man, yeah, that'd be cool for you. Uh, Coral Reef is also on Instagram. You know what? Um, if, you, if you can send, send me that too. I'll send it to you. Yeah. So I can post that on my page. I got a uh, backstage access, access here with Coral Reef. Access pass and then you're a gold member. Sweet, <laughs> bud. This is dope, man. Dang, that's just one piece. Uh, I'm just. I think, I think since the last time you made the video, that's the one that kind of like changed, you know? I don't remember that one last time, but. Yeah. It's freaking amazing. Jeez. This one's pretty sweet too. And it's crazy because some of these, I literally just brought them in here because they were dying. I'm not dying no more. You know what I mean? They were either customers brought them in because they're like, "Here, man, I'll give you a piece of this one." It was it was supposed to look like this, but it doesn't look like that in my tank. So. And then we just pop them in here. My camera just I'm kind of shadowing. Yeah. There's some fire too right here. I think why you tuned down the picture. Oh, that's cool. Oh, no. Last time it was like super dead, huh? I, I got to come in a little early today because last time um, uh, Coral Reef had a lot of customers. Yeah. Tips. 
You know what I mean? And of course, some of the stuff, some of these SPS don't do so good sometimes. You know what I mean? They don't, they don't take up. You know, whoever, anybody that grows SPS tells you like, no, nothing dies. Like, like everything, hundred percent survival rate. Like, you know, like even even worldwide grows will tell you like they have like maybe a one percent survival. Oh really? Like like death rate. I mean, because there's just some corals that just kind of never, never take up, you know. At least they can't live in a controlled environment like this. So. Hey, that badass. The freaking chalice is super cool, man. This one. And you would never think that's a chalice. You know? It's like a bubbly looking chalice. It looks like a bronze. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah, yeah. The green one? exciting part about it is that I have LPS here too. Oh, I love it. Some of, these, some, of these, some of these LPS have some of the craziest colors. Some of the best colors. Jeez. Check that out, guys. Yeah. Oh, freaking fuzzy this one is. Nope. Some happy corals. Extension is on point. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out. This tank is long. I don't know about you guys, but how many of you guys hang out at your LFS for you just 
say you're going to hang out for a little bit, but you end up hanging out for like two hours. That's what happened to me in this case. I actually went here before the store opened up. I was here at 9.30. They opened up on the weekends at 10 a.m. I didn't leave till at least 12 o'clock. Uh, so that was just cool. Just, you know, BSing, looking at the corals, talking, doing the equipment tour and everything. And I was here for a good two hours plus. And uh, I don't know if you guys are like that as well. I did go ahead and get some uh, SPS from the coral reef last time. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get another piece right here. Uh, something a little bit nice also from his main display, which I didn't get last time. But I'm going to go ahead and pick it up and uh, see how good it does in my tank. Hopefully, I don't kill it. I'm also going to be taking up some Zoas. I showed you guys the uh, Zoas in the part one video of the equipment tour. Uh, some nice stuff. Um, I had got some really nice red ones. I think they were called Red Bulls. And uh, I got me a strawberry shortcake acro. And hopefully I don't kill it. Um, but it's looking really nice. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, place it on this rock. And hopefully it grows out. I was talking to Alan and uh, I was telling him that my elk is usually around 7. Uh, I'm interested to know what you guys are thinking about your elk, where you guys keep your elk. Um, you guys are SPS masters out there. Uh, I can say that Alan for sure is an SPS master. His display looks really nice. Uh, and my stuff is uh, at 7, but uh, he suggested I go ahead and raise it up to 8. And I was watching a Great American Reef channel and they keep... Sanjay keeps his up like 10, 11, 12 elk. So let me know what you guys do. But we'll catch you on the next one, guys.